So we're live on Facebook. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for waiting uh, and thank you for your patience. Uh, welcome to the third digital webinar in a series commemorating the bicentennial of the Greek War of Independence. Uh, my name is Muthiadis Pekopoulos. I'm the president of the Palakonian Youth, and I'm joined silently by Andrew Christopoulos, who is the youth vice president, and he'll be managing the Zoom session in the background. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce our guest lecturers, uh, Stavros Vlizos, uh, Daphne Martin, and will be joined by Dean uh, Menegas. Uh, Stavros is a graduate of the University of Janina and received his PhD from the Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich. He's worked with the Greek Ministry of Culture, the Benaki Museum, uh, and as a researcher and an associate director. Uh, Stavros is currently the director of the uh, museum collections of the Ionian University and the Amiklis Research Program. He's also an associate of the Athenian Archaeological Society and a corresponding member of the German Archaeological Institute, a member of ICOM and a co-founder of the Athens Roman Seminar. Daphne is currently pursuing her PhD in classical art and archaeology at the University of Cambridge, where she is a Paul Mellon Fellow her research focuses the art and archaeology of ancient Sparta, or I should say archaic Sparta. Daphne spent every summer of her life in Greece, uh, which is good news to hear, and specifically in Laconia, where her mother is from, surrounded by archaeological sites and antiquities. Uh, it seems like you've had uh, an upbringing to be envied, so that's <laughs> very lucky. She's interned at the Museum of Cycladic Art, the Acropolis Restoration Service, and the Acropolis Museum as well as worked on various archaeological digs around Greece, including most recently the Amiklis Research Project. Whilst an undergraduate at Yale University in the United States, Daphne worked extensively as a curatorial intern at the Yale Babylonian Collection and Yale University Art Gallery. In 2018, she founded the Embracing Our Monuments in Sparta initiative in collaboration with the effort of antiquities Blakonia a project aimed at reviving Sparta's cultural heritage through interact, uh, interactive cultural walks. Daphne also serves as the Vyazuma ambassador for the ancient theatre of Sparta. Uh, just a quick reminder that there'll be an opportunity for um, uh, questions at the end, but, it, but this depends on, on the time of the lecture. Um, so it's my pleasure now to introduce uh, Stavros and Daphne to begin their lecture, and uh, we'll hear from Dean later. Thanks, Daphne. Um, Daphne? I'll just quickly screen share to give you uh, the beginning of the presentation. One moment. So that you have it in the back. Or should I say just a few words, a uh, welcoming words? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. So, um, Εγώ θα κάνω ε, μία αδικία, θα το πω έτσι. <laughs> θα μιλήσω στα ελληνικά. <laughs> Νομίζω ότι όλοι καταλαβαίνετε. Οπότε ε, θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω θερμά και τον Μιλτιάδη και τον Ανδρέα και όλη την νεολαία των λακώνων της Μελβούρνης για αυτή την εξαιρετική εκδήλωση. Ε, να τους συγχαρώ για τις προσπάθειες που κάνουν. Είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό αυτό να βλέπεις τους νέους ανθρώπους να προσπαθούν να κρατάνε τις ρίζες τους ζωντανές. Ε, και να πω ότι το αμικλέο, ε, αν και είναι ίσως άγνωστο σε πολλούς, είναι ένα πολύ σημαντικό σημείο αναφοράς για την Σπάρτη, την Λακωνία και την αρχαιολογία της Ελλάδας γενικότερα. Θα λέγαμε ότι το αμικλέο είναι η Ακρόπολης και ο Παρθενώνας της Σπάρτης. Πρέπει να καταλάβουμε αυτήν την αντιστοιχία. Η Αθήνα έχει την Ακρόπολη της, έχει τον Παρθενώνα της, έχει και το νέο μουσείο Ακροπόλεως, <laughs> κάτι που εμείς δεν το έχουμε στη Σπάρτη. Αλλά η Σπάρτη, αντίστοιχα, είχε το κεντρικό σημείο της θρησκείας, του, της θρησκείας της στο Αμικλέο, με τον θρόνο του Απόλλωνα, όπως τον βλέπετε εδώ πέρα, με τον Απόλλωνα να δεσπόζει και εκεί ήταν το σημείο συνάντησης για όλη τη Λακωνία στην αρχαιότητα. 
ε, θα, θα κλείσω αυτή την σύντομη, τον σύντομο χαιρετισμό λέγοντας ότι η αρχαιολογία δεν λειτουργεί αυτόματα. Η αρχαιολογία είναι ο άνθρωπος, ο ίδιος ο άνθρωπος. Και για το αμικλαίο και την αρχαιολογία του αμικλαίου, ο ένας βασικός άνθρωπος είναι ο άγγελος Δελιβοριάς. Ο άγγελος Δελιβοριάς είναι μια προσωπικότητα στην Ελλάδα, ήταν μια προσωπικότητα στην Ελλάδα, δυστυχώς δεν τον έχουμε πια κοντά μας, αλλά είναι αυτός ο άνθρωπος ο οποίος ζωντάνεψε το αμικλαίο, είναι ο, ήταν ο παλιός διευθυντής του Μουσείου Μπενάκη στην Αθήνα, είναι αυτός που μας έδωσε την ευκαιρία να δουλέψουμε στο αμικλαίο, να το αναδείξουμε και να το πάμε στο επόμενο στάδιο. Και το επόμενο στάδιο, the next step, είναι κάτι το οποίο σχετίζεται με όλους εσάς, τους νέους ανθρώπους. Οι νέοι άνθρωποι είναι το μέλλον και της αρχαιολογίας και του πολιτισμού της Ελλάδας γενικότερα. Και νέος άνθρωπος είναι και ο Τιν που είναι κοντά μας, τον οποίο ο τον, τον έπεισε, uh, he convinced the Dean very early that uh, his involvement is very crucial as uh, of anyone uh, in a project like the Amiklion. Ο Dean, λοιπόν, uh, είναι ένας άλλος άνθρωπος που βοηθάει την αρχαιολογία και το Αμικλαίο uh, πρακτικά, δυναμικά, είναι ο άνθρωπος ο οποίος μας δίνει την ευκαιρία να δουλεύουμε κάθε καλοκαίρι εκεί. Και πάμε και σε έναν άλλον άνθρωπο, την Δάφνη μας, το, τη νεότερη, το μικρότερο μέλος, να το πούμε έτσι, της οικογένειας του Αμικλαίου, που ως φοιτήτρια έρχεται κοντά μας, μαζί με μια μεγάλη παρέα φοιτητών, οι οποίοι προσπαθούν κάθε καλοκαίρι να μελετήσουν το Αμικλαίο, να σκάψουν όλα αυτά που βλέπετε εδώ πέρα, πρακτικά να συμμετέχουν στις ανασκαφές, αλλά και να δημιουργούν μία επικοινωνία με την τοπική κοινωνία. Η Δάφνη μιλάει με τους ανθρώπους που μένουν στη Σπάρτη, ε, εργάζεται μαζί τους, δημιουργεί δράσεις. Αυτό είναι ένα άλλο μεγάλο στοιχείο που μας ενδιαφέρει πάρα πολύ στο Αμικλαίο, Public Archaeology. Με αυτά τα λίγα λόγια, εύχομαι να... Ε, σας αρέσει η παρουσίασή μας σήμερα εδώ. Εύχομαι να δημιουργηθούν καλές σχέσεις μεταξύ μας, να ξέρετε ότι είμαστε πάρα χαρούμενοι για οποιαδήποτε επικοινωνία με όλους σας. Φυσικά, το κυριότερο είναι να σας δούμε και στον χώρο, στο Αμικλαίο, στη Σπάρτη, να περπατήσουμε, να πιούμε ένα ποτήρι κρασί, να περάσουμε πολύ καλά. Και με αυτά τα λόγια δίνω το λόγο στην Δάφνη, ευχαριστώντας και πάλι όλους σας για τη συμμετοχή σας σήμερα εδώ. Thank you all. Ευχαριστώ πολύ Σταύρο. Θα κάνω τώρα, as I will switch now to English, I'm going to do a share screen um, to start my PowerPoint. And um, Mikhiadi, could you just confirm that you all are able to see that? It looks wonderful. I'm ready to hear what you've got to say. Great. Okay, so we're actually going to start with um, a video.
Okay. Um, so again, thank you Stavro so much for that generous introduction um, and hello to everyone from Cambridge. Greetings to you all watching in Melbourne, Sydney, Athens or anywhere else around the world. Today we will travel together five kilometers to the south of modern Sparta to the site of Amiklai, one of the five villages that made up ancient Sparta and to the sanctuary of Apollo Amikleos. It is here that since 2005, Aguilas de Liborias and now Stavros Blizos have led international and multidisciplinary teams in uncovering the material remains of past activities on the site. Since this is a lecture in honor of the bicentennial of Greek independence, I thought it would be humbling for me to share that even while Greece was under Ottoman rule in 1805, the British traveler William Leake paid homage to the site, identifying it even then prior to the first session of excavations with the sanctuary of Apollo. Today, we will discuss together the history of excavations on the site, as well as key finds. For the second half of the lecture, I'll present some of the exciting and cutting edge research being done now by our team in 2021, as well as public archeology, span 200 years after our fellow countrymen and women, of which we all know the Lacones were no small part, declared their freedom. I will end by sharing with you our vision for the future of the Amicleon, as well as the ways you can be a part of this and help us to achieve our goals. So without further ado, let us begin. Every archeological site has its own history. Today, it is my pleasure to share with you our own, which stretches back over 100 years ago. The first to recognize the architectural members of the sanctuary's monuments, fitted into the walls of the old church of Agia Kiriati was German archeologist Adolf Furtwängler in 1878, a mere 50 years or so after Greece's independence. Soon after, it was Christos Tsoudas, the illustrious Greek archeologist, who was the first to excavate on the site in 1889 to 90 under the auspices of the Archaeological Society of Athens, which still supports our excavation today. So this is most important discovery was the precinct or Peribolos wall and the remains of a circular building, which he interpreted as the foundations of the base of a throne. Sudas also found a deposit of material ranging from the Bronze Age to the geometric period, including pottery and terracotta figurines. From 1904 to seven, Ernst Fichte continued the work, re-identifying Tsudas' circular building as an altar and demolishing the church of Agia Kiriaki, which then stood on the site and was subs subsequently rebuilt in order to uncover the spolia from the throne then incorporated into its construction. Finally, in 1925, Ernst Buscher of the German Archaeological Institute conducted research on the chronology of the sanctuary, although his conclusions have since then been revised. This history gives us then a snapshot of the Amicleon as an important component of Sparta's archeological landscape and one which has long been the focus of scientific study. Here you can see the evolving site plans of the Amicleon from 1892 to the present. You can notice in particular the movement of the church of Agia Kiriaki, as well as the gradual uncovering of the most significant topograph topographical features of the site over the centuries. And of course, the Amicleon, in addition, at the Amicleon, in addition to our dedication to the stones, if you will, to the material remains of the past, we also care about people. For in fact, a site is nothing without people to bring it to life. Here you can see some photos from the early 20th century of locals participating in the excavations. These are our great grandfathers. And so in this way, we realize how much the preservation and showcasing of the monument becomes a heritage in its own way. My great grandfather, for example, used to work at archeological digs around Sparta. And my mother has told me she still remembers him coming home to tell the grandchildren, grandchildren what wonderful finds uh, they had found that day. And even now in the 21st century, this need to preserve what has been left behind does not waver. Since 2005, the Amiklas Research Project has carried out its program of study and research on the site. Eminent researchers, passionate PhD students, and amicleans have given their hearts and minds to the site, 
each in their own way. Notable scientific achievements include the drawing, study, photography, and identification of the in situ architectural fragments of two of the most important features of the site, the throne of Apollo and the altar, as well as the uncovering of the archaic precinct wall. The arch archaeological monuments and its site were mapped and documented by the method of 3D scanning, photogrammetry, and as a key complementary pillar to our scientific goals is also public archaeology and its emphasis on engaging with the local community and integrating the site into its natural, cultural, and social environment. So at this point, you might be wondering, what is the Amicleon actually? Who was it used by and for how long? What makes it so important for a study of ancient Spartan history and society? The Amicleon was settled from as early as 2200 BCE during the period known as the Bronze Age, which is also when the other Mycenaean centers in the Avrotas Valley, such as the palatial complex at Agios Vasilios, Pelana, and the Vafiotholos tomb would have been in use. These were the homes of warrior kings of the sort we hear about from Homer, who himself describes the glorious palace of King Menelaus and beautiful Helen at Sparta. From 1100 BCE, we have evidence for its use as a sacred site, and in particular, one related to Hyacinthus and the god Apollo. This seems to continue for over a millennium, with clear indications, both from literary sources and archeological evidence, that the site continued to have importance also in the Roman period in late antiquity. From 500 BCE onwards, we see a Christian reuse of the site. And for me, this is one of the aspects of the site that makes it so intriguing and worthy of study, that it offers both these distinct slices of time, but at the same time, a continuity of use. Let's imagine now, as strange an exercise as it may be given our current virtual format and the international location of our presenters and viewers, that we are all together on the site. Now that you have a sense of what it looks like, and the excavation work that has been happening there over the past century. I'd like to show you the key features of the site and encourage you to visualize to the extent that you're able what it would feel like to be confronted with such features as a worshiper, an ancient Spartan, coming to pay your respects to the god Apollo at his most important sanctuary in Sparta. Let us begin from the outside in with the fortification wall of the sanctuary also known as the perivolos or precinct wall, delineating the boundaries of the sacred space. The perivolos wall would have been a necessity for any self-respecting Greek sanctuary. Just as the Athenian Acropolis consists of a fortified hill, so the Amicleon would have as well, likely with a monumental propylaea or entrance on the northern side of the site. On the left, you can see a digital reconstruction with a suggested height based on the current excavations and of course, we have to imagine it encircling the entire hill. This would have made the site even more visually imposing than it is now, announcing the site's importance to the visitor of an importance, an importance equivalent to the Acropolis for the Athenians. And here you see another view from the east of the hill of the Amicleon and the surrounding fortification. And you can see clearly how it stands out in the much smaller rolling hills of the rest of the landscape. The Peribolos has been a focus of the excavations in the past seasons, and in particular the portion on the south side of the sanctuary facing away from Sparta. In the left photograph, in particular, you can see the large rectangular blocks which would have made up the archaic wall. At right, you see the foundations of the geometric Peribolos, which came before the archaic one. What's been really interesting for us is also the discovery of Ariboloi, small vessels for oil or perfume which seems to have been deliberately placed in front of or between the stones of the wall by, sanctuaries, by the sanctuary's visitors. Next, we have the main attraction of the site, the throne of Apollo. Pausanias, the second century AD travel writer who wrote the descriptions of Greece, neglects to describe the glorious frieze and metopes of the Parthenon, but takes great care to describe in detail the representations on the throne of Apollo, 
said to have been crafted by Bathocles of Magnesia from Asia Minor. Pausanias goes into such detail in his writing about the throne that he confesses to the reader ver at various times that he's in fact omitting further details, which he thinks would only bore us. It is from this description and not the archeological evidence that many imaginative reconstructions of the famous throne have been made. You see some of the variations here, which in themselves reflect more the nationalities of their artists and their own time than any archeological reality. But this throne, so famous in antiquity, yet largely lost to us today, would have been the highlight of the sanctuary, if you will. And we have to imagine that just like the giant cult statue of Athena on the Acropolis, whose gleaming spear would have been visible even from Piraeus, this statue too would have been visible from various key points around the Averotas Valley. So what archeological evidence do we have for the throne, you might ask? Well, enough to prove that Pausanias isn't going completely on a limb here but was in fact describing some semblance of historical reality. Here, I would like to draw your attention to this beautiful capital, today in the Archaeological Museum of Sparta, which may have been part of the throne. For those of you familiar with the usual stylistic types in Greek architecture, the Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian, you'll notice that here, in fact, we have a mixture, a fusion of elements, and the characteristic Ionic spiral, here flanked by unfurling flowers, acanthi, and the Doric column finish. There's a number of other architectural members rebuilt into the church of Hagia Kyriaki and other villages around modern day Amiklai, which are now being studied on our site. Since no fragments of the relief decoration described by Pausanias have to this date been discovered, Agelos de Liborias, the former director of the excavation, has proposed as the only feasible solution that they would have been made of wood and have long since disintegrated into the Spartan soil. Here you have some wonderful images from the site itself, which show you clockwise from top left, uh, spolia, which are still remaining in the walls of Hagia Kyriaki, um, and the portion of stone in which it's thought that the base of Apollo statue would have been inserted. And here you can see my friend George pretending to be the statue of Apollo. Um, and it's described as 14 meters tall, resembling a bronze pillar, and according to Pausanias, on its head, it would have had a helmet, while in its hands, a spear and a bow. Finally, at bottom left, you see much of the arch architectural remains from the throne and the altar, which remain on the site. Now, let's walk together to another impressive and unique feature of the site. It's circular stepped altar. As you can see, it is still today and would have been then dramatically framed by the Taiyatos mountain range. The Greeks were generally very good at selecting stunning natural locations for their temples and theaters. The altar would have been the focal point of ritual ceremonies on the site, which would have involved primarily the sacrifice of animals. This is evidenced by a mixture of ash, pottery, votive offerings, and a few animal bones, found in a layer of black earth in the investigations of Tsudas. It parallels similar ash layers in other Greek sanctuaries, such as that Olympia. Just as a statue would have been visible from all around the Avrotas Valley, we can also imagine that the plume of smoke rising from the circular stepped altar would have served as a signal or a sign to those in the surrounding area that offerings to Apollo and Hyakinthos were taking place. In the summer of 2009, the restoration of the monument took place, which involved the partial reconstruction of the altar. Um, and you can see the new additions are the bright white marble in contrast to the now gray originals, as well as the confirmation of its size. In the 21st century, in addition to continuing to be a focus of scientific study, it now serves also as our drone launch pad, a spot for team photo shoots, as well as a convenient perch for curious visitors of the site. So in conclusion, we see in this bird's eye image, these three components, the pergolos encircling the sanctuary site, the monumental throne and the altar, as well as their relationship to each other. And the little red arrow 
um, at the top with procession indicates where the entrance would have been. And the procession being referred to is one attested by literary sources, which make clear that the Amicleon was the site of one of the most important festivals for Sparta, the Hyacinthia. This annual festival was held in honor of and named after Hyacinthus, the youngest son of, a, son of Amiklas, a local god of vegetation, as well as a lover of Apollo, faithfully slain by a stray blow from his lover's discus. Hyacinthus's tomb was said to be within the sanctuary of Apollo Amicleos, probably under the throne of Apollo. And so it was in his name every year that young Spartan boys, we think, would process from Sparta to Amiklai, observed by the whole Debos, uh, the populace, to take part in the festivities on the site. Last but not least, our last stop on our visit to the Amicleon is a snapshot of some of our finds. These range over an incredible time span from the Bronze Age to the Christian period, as is in fact the case for many sites in Sparta. At top left and right, you have votive figurines of terracotta decorated with glaze from the very first uses of the site during the Mycenaean period. The left photo is what's known as a psi figurine because of its similarity to the Greek letter, while on the right is an animal figurine of a bull. At bottom left is one of my favorite finds from the site, a bronze griffin, which would have been part of a prestigious offering known as a tripod cauldron, which you can see pictured next to it. And at right, you see us in the process of sorting and cleaning the most common find, pottery, uh, including the small vessels for oil, the aribaloi, which I mentioned earlier. And so with that, we conclude the first portion of the pr presentation and return to the 21st century to discuss what it actually means to bring Greece's heritage to life and ways in which you can help our efforts. At the Amicleon, we remain committed to the living archeological site, which means taking action to involve people, the local community and visitors from around the world. This is manifested in our dedication to presenting the results of our research to the public through tours open to all. This is a nice way to share the results of hard seasons of work, but also a wonderful way to include Amicleans and Spartans in the process. There are those who come back every time such a tour is offered, and in that sense become part of the excavation's journey. Knowledge and heritage are therefore made inclusive and alive. We collaborate continuously with local stakeholders as yet another way of integrating the Amicleon into modern life. This ranges from discussions with local politicians and the archeological service about the creation of a potential archeological park for the Amicleon, all the way to organizing events with environmental, cultural and athletic groups based in Sparta. We organize various educational programs for children throughout the year, which take advantage of the unique pedagogical value of the site in teaching about the work of an archeologist, the process of excavation, and finding ways to creatively recreate the site's history. And one of the most important ways in which we engage with the local community is also through our organization of supporters, the Friends of the Amicleon, which I also warmly invite you all to join and I'll explain how to do so at the end. This is our human network acting as a liaison, if you will, with those who might not be archeologists per se, but still love the site, believe in our mission, and want to stay in the loop and help in some way. The Friends of the Amicleon spreads awareness of our project and its aims in the local community. But we hope now and with this presentation as a starting point that this can in fact be extended into an international community of supporters. In addition to this human and public archeology span component of the excavation, the Amicleon Research Project strives to take advantage also of new technologies, which are changing the ways we preserve and interact with our heritage today. One example of this is photogrammetry and droning, which has really become crucial to our project in the last few years. <clears throat> its uses vary from creating, <clears throat> sorry, 3D mesh reconstructions of the site like the one you see on the right, 
but on the day-to-day -day, taking aerial photos of our progress, as well as contributing data for our GIS map. We're also working really closely with AMREP, an augmented mixed reality educational platform, whose objective is the development of augmented reality educational applications in the sectors of cultural heritage and tourism. In the future, we hope that the experience of the Amaklan will be enhanced through such a digital interface. So I've shared with you all the past of the Amaklan and the present. Now we will jump forward in time to the future, as well as to ways in which you can help us to achieve this vision. Since 2005, excavations have been focused on the hill. From 2021 to 2025, we plan to extend into the surrounding area. This could be especially important for uncovering additional structures relating to the sanctuary, such as artistic workshops, storage facilities, or dining and sleeping areas. And it's the first time that archeological activity will be focused here, starting with a geophysical survey, which will give us information about what sort of structures exist under the soil. This will be an exciting new phase of the project, which will lead to new scientific discoveries. Along with this, it's our aim to continue to produce and disseminate research of the highest quality on Sparta's history, art, and archeology. span This involves everyone from leading scholars to undergraduate students on their first excavation experience. We plan to continue strengthening our bonds with the local community through public tours, events held on the site, and children's education programs. We hope that the Amakleon can serve as a model archeological site, one that demonstrates in action what it means to be a living site of shared cultural heritage for all. And I very, very much hope that some of you at least will be able to join us on the site in the not too distant future. For this vision to come true, however, we need your support. Here I've outlined the cost the excavation is facing for this exciting new phase of our project. The total required to cover these is 90,000 euros. Of course, this is no small sum, which is why I emphasize at the bottom that even a small contribution has the potential to make a really big difference for our project. But for those, and here I mean both individuals and organizations, who are willing and able to make a larger contribution, in my mind, there can be no more meaningful way to make a difference as a Laconian passionate about our past and our heritage than to support that McLean. And if you'll allow me, I'll explain briefly how to do so before handing over to one of our current supporters to say a few words about his own experience and love for the site. So the Amikla's research project is under the auspices of the Archaeological Society Foundation, and therefore it is through them that you may make a tax deductible donation to, to our cause. You can see their website under the title at the top of the slide. Donations can be made either via check or direct deposit to the two addresses listed here, which are administered by the president of the society, uh, the Greek archaeologist Agelos Haniotis. And all you need to do is specify that the funds are for the Amakleon research project. At the end of this presentation, I'll have Stavros's email as well as my own, so that if you're interested in making a donation, you can contact either of us if you have further questions or want further details on the specifics of project finances. And of course, it doesn't need to be restated that it would be so meaningful for us to have the Laconians of Melbourne and Sydney become part of the Friends of the Amakleon, so that you can stay up to date with all our latest research and events. And the way to do that is via the Amakleon website, amakleon.gr, and you will see a drop down menu from top right where you can click on Friends of the Amakleon. Um, and there's a registration page with directions on how to do so. So at this point, I'd like to take a moment to recognize our past and current donors who have been absolutely instrumental in making possible the work of the project over the past 15 years. Uh, and in particular, on behalf of the Amakleon team, I'd like to thank the Dean and Menegas family and Dean for their unwavering support um, and everything they've made possible as a result for the excavation, both past, present, and future. Um, and it's a particular honor to have Dean with us here today, 
Uh, so maybe at this point, I will hand him the virtual floor um, to say a few words. Uh, I don't know, Mithyadi, whether I need to stop screen share in order to do so. Um, well, no, as long as uh, Dean or Stavros put, uh, puts their microphone off mute, it'll, it'll be fine. You can leave your screen share and it doesn't affect it unless he has a PowerPoint. Sure. sure. Uh, so no, Dean, this... a... Hello, can you hear me? Yes. And see me? I can, yes. Yeah, we can okay. see you. You're just being the corner right. above the PowerPoint. Great, thank you very much. And thank you so much for, for inviting me to join you today. It, it's, a real, it's a real privilege for me to be, <clears throat> to be, in, to be involved in this project, uh, to have been able to, um, to, to follow along and to participate in and, and to uh, enjoy um, uh, the, the discoveries uh, that, that Stavros and Daphne have been talking about. Lako um, Nasime. Uh, all four of my grandparents are from Laconia. Uh, we like to think our family's been in Laconia since Leonidas, who knows? Uh, <clears throat> I've born and raised in Chicago where there's a large um, uh, Laconian community. Uh, I currently live in London. Um, and when I met Angelos de Liborias in London a dozen years ago <clears throat> at an event about uh, Mistra, Byzantine history, um, after he heard of my connection with the area, with Laconia, he, he gripped my arm. And he looked at me intently and he said, you must come to the Amiklein. And he was right. He was right. Um, <clears throat> there are three key reasons why this project is so monumentally important and is such an extraordinary privilege to be associated with. Um, one is the physical remains. As we all know, the magnificence of ancient Sparta is not matched by the physical representations of the past. Um, in Athens, there's dozens of structures from antiquity in, for which we have remains at least as significant as the Amiklion, perhaps not as him, historically significant, but, but visually um, large. But in Laconia, the Amiklion represents a very significant percentage of the total physical remains of ancient Sparta that we can see today. So we're really moving the needle here. We're making a difference. We're we're rewriting and filling in the history of ancient Sparta and we are giving people from all over the world an opportunity to see significantly more about ancient Sparta than they would have been able to see in the past. And number two is the timing. Um, these artifacts have been on the site, some of them for 3000 years or 2,500 years or 2000 years <clears throat> and Daphne told you a little bit about the uh, archaeologists that dabbled in this site in the past, <clears throat> uh, for Fangor Chuntas, Fichter, Bushor, and in each of them you saw, you know, a one year after their name, right? So they came, they did a little bit, but in order to for, to really explore this site, this opportunity has not fallen to people a thousand years ago, or a hundred years ago, or a hundred years from now or a thousand years from now, you know, thanks to Angelos de Liborias and Stavros Blizos, it has fallen to us to explore, to discover, to reveal, to interpret, and to share the remains of this exceptionally important site. We're the ones with the privilege and the responsibility to see this project through. Uh, my family and I consider ourselves exceptionally privileged that we happen to be here at this time, in this place, to participate in this project. Um, and the other thing is that in making a difference in the Amiklion research project is making a significant difference with a relatively modest contribution is possible. I mean, <clears throat> honestly, a contribution of thousand euros, 5,000 euros, 10,000 euros, 20,000 euros to the reconstruction of the Athenian Acropolis is a drop in the bucket. But to the Amiklion project, a contribution of a few thousand euros makes a big difference in the annual excavation. It really, it, it's really an important percentage of what, of what is we are able to do on an annual basis. So because of the physical remains, because of the timing, 
and because of the scale of the project, it's, uh, it's an exceptional opportunity to be involved directly. Uh, and it's been really the great privilege of my life to support this project over the past 10 years. And I, um, I earnestly invite you to join me and my family in supporting it over the next 10 years. Thank you, Dean. I think you put it better, better than either Stavros or I um, would have been able. Uh, really, it's so meaningful um, to have, have your continued support and to see you every summer, of course, as well on the site and to dig together and to uncover um, physically these remains, uh, which are helping us piece by piece uh, to reconstruct Sparta's history. Can I add something Stavro? to this? Yes, of course. Um, uh... Uh, in addition to what the Dean said, um, it is also for us, uh, for me as an archaeologist, uh, as the director of this project, uh, a wonderful opportunity to get involved with, uh, with uh, donors, let's say. It's, um, it's completely different to have Dean on site, digging with us, getting in the, into the dirt and uh, uh, under uh, under the sun with uh, these uh, climate conditions, um, and uh, I think this experience is also unique. What you can have there, um, which makes your contribution, your participation, really uh, as as a vital part of the whole project. So consider your um, um, uh, I wouldn't say donation, I would say participation, also as a as part of this human uh, network, what we want to create, as Daphne uh, explained it before, very, very, very nicely. So um, it's not just, uh, it's not money, it's you what's important for us. Thank you so much, Dean, for this. And uh, just to conclude, uh, we wanted to dedicate this lecture to the memory of Aguilos de Livoyas, um, who, as has already been mentioned, was so crucial and so passionate uh, in sort of getting the project moving in 2005. And we wouldn't be where we are today without him. Um, so, and thank you to everyone who's watching uh, from Melbourne, from Sydney, from all around the world. We really appreciate being able to extend the friends of the Amicleon. Um, in this virtual way, um, and hopefully in the site soon, as soon as we're able um, to the international community. Well, thank you so much, Daphne. Thank you so much, Stavros and Dean. Um, I think uh, your contribution has been amazing. Although we've only met now through Zoom, I, I'd love to strike it up again and, and uh, keep in contact. So, um, uh, First of all, um, I know how difficult it must be to organize and coordinate uh, all the times and different time zones and what have you, but um, I'm very glad that we've done this because uh, just similar to Daphne and obviously a lot of people, um, this is uh, a passion of mine as well. So I'm glad that we've been able to do this. I'm, I'm very glad. Um, now, hopefully we've got some time uh, to open the floor to questions in case our listeners are on uh, Facebook or Zoom have any questions after the lecture. Although I think it was so thorough uh, that I doubt anybody's got any questions. So, um, but in regards to all the information, Daphne, that you put on screen uh, to do with uh, people in the diaspora contributing uh, to the project, uh, please send those to me again, forward them, and I will make sure that we uh, put those on all of our platforms and we share it because I think that's important. Yeah. Um, Andrew, in the background, can you check if there's been any questions on the Facebook? All right, I'm looking at the Facebook. I can see a lot of kudos, but I can't see too many questions. Uh, so I see a lot of congratulations. Um, let's read through it. I do have a question actually, and I think Daphne and uh, Stavros will be very well placed to answer it. And it's been a question that's been on my mind for a long time, uh, which is culturally, 
uh, the role of Apollo, obviously it was very significant to the ancient uh, Lacunas. Uh, however, from my current knowledge of the situation, especially to do with the Dorian Achaean uh, connection that the uh, Spartiates had, uh, in Rhodos, I understand that Helios, Helios was the primary solar god. Did Helios have a cult in ancient Sparta or was it was his role um, completely subsumed by Apollo? Sabra, would you like to respond? I can, okay. Um, I think Apollo seems to have been a very important deity in Sparta. Mm -hmm. In addition to the Amicleon, there's actually a couple of sites in what we might call the Laconian countryside or the periphery, um, which not ma many people know about, Apollo Malateas, Apollo Hyperteleteas, and Apollo Tiritas. Um, and these sites are not sort of fully excavated and presented to the public, but there's archeological evidence that shows that they were quite important. Um, as for a cult to Helios, the only thing that I would sort of potentially compare is, we all know the peak of Taigetos is Prophet Silias. Um, and we all know that the 21st of, July, um, when it is the same day of Ilia, there's a big sort of hiking trip and the youth from Sparta go up and do a big bonfire and whatnot. Um, so as for archeological remains on the peak, I'm sure that there must have been some sort of structure um, from earlier time periods, but I don't think that we have strong evidence um, for worship of Helios in Sparta at this time. Stavro, I don't know if you have anything to add. No, actually, there is no, um, no worship, uh, no similar worship. It's a... Uh... Rhodian uh, uh, characteristic. Uh, and uh, on the Taikitos, uh, there is uh, this uh, Zeus sanctuary on the peak where um, <coughs> they celebrate it <coughs> additionally to the, uh, all the other sanctuaries in Aaron Sparta, uh, Zeus. So um, uh, Apollo in Sparta is uh, very specifically involved in the rates of uh, initiation and transition of the youth into the next step. This is the main part of his uh, role there. And on the other hand, he was uh, the, the god who um, um, uh, who protected the troops, the Spartan troops, before they went to the battle. Uh, therefore, um, uh, the Amiclion was also the, let's say, the meeting point before leaving to the front, <laughs> leaving to the front. So protector of the, on the one hand, and um, uh, the one who uh, trans transmitted the, the youth to the next step in their social life. Well, although I shouldn't, I probably have enough questions to fill a book to ask both of you, but I'll keep them to myself as much as possible, although I'm bursting at the seams to ask a few. Um, uh, I think the, I mean, I, I don't think I should read out all of the congratulations on the Facebook because there are too many to list so far, um, but definitely from on behalf of the uh, committee, it's been such a pleasure to reach out to, to you and thank you, uh, Daphne, for putting us in contact with Stavros and Dean. Um, and I think that amongst all the fundraising that the Greek community does in Melbourne, um, I'd very much like to see some of it go towards a very worthy cause um, indeed. Uh, because I think that uh, we've got the, uh, uh, we have the resources, but sometimes we uh, lack the collective structure to put them all together at once and, and make the change. But I, hopefully we can because of this. And I think you've articulated it very clearly. I think you've told everybody exactly what they need to do. So no one will be confused. Um, um, if, if, I, if I may, Miltiadis. Yeah. Um, uh, as um, Daphne showed, there are two ways, actually. One is um, indirectly through the states, with the, this archaeological society, uh, in Princeton. Uh, the other way is, um, as indicated in our website, directly through our um, uh, Friends of the Amiclion Association. So you can also donate directly to the Greek uh, bank account, let's say, uh, which is uh, the one uh, 
uh, which is our source uh, in the end uh, to to proceed the works uh, with the works at the site. But we will will deliver all the uh, information in detail to you, Mitiadis. Well, I have no doubt that this lecture will be our most successful in terms of reach. Um, I think that uh, Daphne always makes a very professional presentation, so uh, there'll be no no complaints on that end either. Um, so yeah, exactly established. Congratulations to Daphne again. Um, uh, in terms of what we can do on our end, of course, we're going to do everything that we can to share these, um, both of the methods that you that you mentioned, Stavros. Um, and yeah, like we said, Daphne, send those to me and um, we'll post those on the Pelicanian page. Um, and I also made sure to invite the Amiklion Facebook page to co-host this event so that obviously on your end, you'll be able to, um, to do the same and to, to reshare or repost whatever we do as well. Um, uh, oh, we do. Oh, we do have a question. Sorry, um, Andrew, uh, the vice president has come in with a question. Um, uh, Andrew asks, were there horse remains found on Mount uh, Daiyatos uh, indicative of sacrificial uh, sacrifice or ritual sacrifice? And did this imply a cult of Helios? Okay, so he's obviously interested in the same things as me. <laughs> I don't know which one, which, Daphne or Stavros, if you'd like to answer that. Um, no, I, again, there is no no connection between uh, Helios and uh, and uh, Apollo in in Sparta. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately for you, I don't know how do you. I think uh, how do I you think feel after people, this. There's, there's <laughs> an agenda. There's there's reality. An agenda. We'd, we'd we'd love there to be some some relation to Helios, but there isn't. So we'll try and yeah. find one. Um, I think yeah. uh, you should you should um, connect more with this uh, throne instead of Helios. Get involved mm -hmm. with the throne. Is it's your. Uh, 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 heritage. Our okay. our heritage is the throne, not uh, not exactly. uh, the horses of uh, Helios or Helios itself. Exactly. I think there's a lot of information that you all mentioned that I think a lot of people didn't know, and they wouldn't have associated with Sparta. And I think that's a shame um, that people don't associate all of these um, achievements that you know they'd usually associate to that very dull and droll dichotomy between Athens ships smart Sparta. Um, not so much, and uh, and uh, military. So I think that uh, obviously we can break that dichotomy a bit. Um, unless there are any other questions, um, or unless any of you have anything to add, um, we can bring the uh, Facebook Live to an end, um, and then we can slowly bring the uh, Zoom to an end as well. Um, Daphne, Stavros, Dean, any last words or? No, that sounds good. I just wanted to say thank you, Miliade, so much um, for giving us the platform in which to present the Amicleon um, and organizing all of this in the webinar series. And let's not forget, it's in honor of Greece's independence 200 years after independence. Um, so it's, of course, also very touching for us to be able to be a part of that. And thank you uh, both to you and to Andrew uh, for connecting us uh, with the Laconians of Melbourne. Hmm. Well, um, for so, me, uh, again, ευχαριστώ για την δυνατότητα, συγχαρητήρια για όσα κάνετε και να συνεχίσετε να είσαστε δυναμικοί. Ευχαριστώ. Μπράβο σας. Μπράβο σας. It's my uh, pleasure. Um, as Daphne already knows, this is uh, definitely uh, an agenda that Andrew and I have pushed, the uh, classic side and the archaeological side. Um, and it really is our pleasure to, to promote that. Um, so, Andrew, could you uh, let me know when you brought the Facebook Live to an end? And